Welcome back into the Enrichment Sports Source. This segment of our show brought to you by Tenova Healthcare, emergency medicine, which I may need before the show ends. Well, Can does. Cancer <laughs> Care, Heart Institute, Robotic Surgery Center, Stroke Center, Labor and Delivery Center, and orthopedic experts. Whatever type of medical care or treatment you may need, I urge you to turn to the group that I turn to, and that is Tenova Healthcare. When I went through a cancer battle, they were with me every step of the way, and I do appreciate them, and I can tell you that would be the right move for you, Tenova Healthcare. All right, back with Jimmy, Bob, and Mike. Talking about recruiting in that last segment, uh, the other day I was rummaging through some stuff that I edited many, many years ago, uh, and one of the things I came across was a highlight tape from a Tennessee-Georgia football game in 1994. That was the Todd Helton game when Tennessee just ran for, I think, 300 yards. Yeah, 383. 383. But you see, um, as, you're, as you're watching it, you're seeing little man Stewart just run down the sideline. Georgia defenders are falling off of him. And it's like somebody taking clothes off. And <laughs> he was just, <laughs> just throwing, they want a, they want a safety, they want a yeah. linebacker. And I'm struck by the fact that, you know, for all the talk that you've got going on right now about, well, they're doing this zone read, there's no need to do all this stuff. If you had a back like James Little Man Stewart, you're not talking about the zone read and all this stuff. I think it goes back to the fact, and I don't know how many people, as much as we say it, I don't know how many people truly grasp where the talent level is and how important it is. Somebody, on Saturday on Twitter said, well, a coach is just supposed to take what he's got and make it better. Yeah, yeah okay. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's um, a limit to that. Yeah, so uh, thoughts on Tennessee's talent level. I don't, I'm going to ask you later where it is. I'm going to ask you guys later where the talent level is specifically. If it's the worst you've seen, worse than 77, worse than 88, whatever. Um, but in terms of this team, in terms of players, how much of a difference would it make if you just had a quarterback, for gosh sakes? I think it'd make a big difference. I mean, I, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, Tennessee next year, even though they're going to lose a lot of offensive linemen, if Jalen Hurd is as good as Gurley or Yeldon, and, and, if one of those, yeah, and if one of those quarterbacks steps up and is as good as Mettenberger, they're going to be all right on offense because I think those young receivers are going to get better. But talent-wise, <coughs> they're, they're about as average as I've seen at Tennessee. And, and they're average for SEC to – Maybe even below average a little bit in some areas. Well, uh, that's a good point. Um, I would say they're almost below average. I mean, let's look around the league. Who has a worse roster right now in Tennessee? All right, Kentucky. Kentucky does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vanderbilt, they're young. He's recruited pretty well, but they're young. I think they'd be in the same zone with Tennessee. Mississippi State, probably in the same zone with Tennessee right now. That's it. I don't even know that Tennessee's average. Are hey, they? You could you could have Arkansas in that zone too. You don't know a lot about Arkansas. Okay. You don't know you know a lot of their players, but I think you could have some. Yeah. Um, and I think that I think one way to look at Tennessee's talent is go back and and the old parlor game was Tennessee had more players in the NFL than anybody. <clears throat> well, they still got quite a few players in the NFL, but a lot <laughs> of guys are making <laughs> rosters. They're free agents. They're yeah. seventh round picks, sixth round mm -hmm. picks. Tennessee used to have two or three picks in the first round, and they would have picks throughout the draft. You'd end up having seven, eight, nine guys drafted. You don't see that from Tennessee anymore. And so I think if you want to find one thing that says that an indictment that the talent level has fallen, that's an easy place to go. Or you could also take this roster and say how many of these players would start in 94, 97, 98, 2001. Well, I'm very many. Oh, they're just little kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I, your point's a good one. I, you take the guys off this team. I played this exercise with a friend of mine this week. Don't play with Bob. There were, there were one or two, there were only one or two names that came out as guys you would see that might have started at any point during the 90s. Uh, Mike, your thoughts on where the Tennessee team is uh, at this point in relation to the rest of the SEC? Because again, I, as much as we say this, and there are some people out there, we've heard this, we know this. A lot of people don't know it. A lot of people just don't want to hear it. A lot of people don't want to admit it. There you go. Uh, they, I think they put the fingers in the ears. Compared to the rest of the SEC, where do you think the talent is? Are we underestimating no, Tennessee? No, I, I think I think it's pretty much what you all said a while ago. The schools you named, uh, and it's you know I, I I definitely think Tennessee's problems right now it's the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. To quote you know several coaches that <laughs> yeah, like to I, say that. And I thought you saw in that Georgia game they were getting the most. I think in that second yeah. half especially, they were, getting, they were milking that cow for about as much milk as you could get out of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much more you could, yeah. you could get. Um, I mentioned quarterback, and you mentioned quarterback. Um, 
going into yesterday's game, I didn't do the, the math with last night, but going into yesterday's game, just in the SEC, the nine SEC schools who had started just one quarterback all year long, just one quarterback, they were combined 37 and 10. The five SEC schools that had started two different quarterbacks during the season were a combined 13 and 14. Wow. I mean, that's, kinda, that's probably counting Florida, yes, which is pretty good. five and one or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's really a, a surprising number, I guess, that it's that skewed. But it, in some ways, it's not surprising that quarterback play is that important. I mean, if you can get, if Ferguson or Dobbs develops, if Worley turns some sort of a corner, mm -hmm. if Peterman comes back and, you know, sprouts a Peyton Manning arm, <laughs> uh, if you had something like that, it makes a monster difference. It I think does. it's the difference between five and seven or seven and five, maybe eight and four if you get a dual threat kind of a guy. I think there are at least 10 teams, maybe even 11 in this league, that like what they're getting out of the quarterback. This is yeah. a really strong league for the SEC at quarterback. It, it is, even, and, and there's a lot of mobile quarterbacks mm -hmm. that are you know, hurting you with their legs right now. And Tennessee's going to be playing, I think, of their six remaining games, four of those are going to be playing the mobile quarterback. And that, for whatever just you can say about Justin Worley improving upside, he's not a mobile quarterback that's going to hurt you with his legs. So yeah, it's true. All right. Uh, tell you, when we come back, uh, we're going to take a stats heavy look at Tennessee's offense. We got midterm grades to hang out. We're going to look at UT's defense. We got a lightning round to play. We got tons of stuff coming up in the show. Also, going to talk about Bristol Motor Speedway. Come on back on the Enrichment Sports Source. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year round sports talk show on television. <laughs> 